Okay, welcome back to Excel cast number five, Management Account Templates, part two. So we left off at the, in the last video. We had this just about completed. I just did a little bit of extra formatting around these boxes. Okay, so again, I want to create another version of this, this sheet so we keep a track of what we've done all along. So I'm going to use shortcut keys this time. The last time you'll, you'll remember I went right click, move or copy. But again, we can do it on shortcut keys. The old version of the shortcut keys on the 2000s and 2003 was Alt Edit Move Copy. And the new version of 2007 forward, the shortcut is shortcut is shortcut is Alt H for Home, O for Format, M for Move or Copy Sheet. And I want to create a copy, and Alt and C at the same time. And I want to move this. I'm going to move it before. B.02. Double click on it to rename it. End and tree. Okay, so what do we want to do this time? Okay, so we want to let's start off here. I'll delete this out of it because that's going to be in my way. Okay, so here, here we are. So we want to go along. We want month two, month three, month four. So I want to make this column narrower. So a simple way that I do it, we can do it through the shortcuts on Alt, H, O, W, and say put in a weight of 1. I want to do that. A uh, way that I often do it, and this is from my old shortcuts cuts, was type in a letter or a number or a character of some type, and Alt, O, C, A, to auto fit the, wheel, the column width. Control Z that to see that again. And you can see June through the columns is very quick. The new shortcut for that on the new versions is Alt, H, O, and I for all of it. So Alt, Alt, H, O, I. Control Z. Alt, H, O, I. Alt, H, O, I. All of it. Okay, so now we have our, our formatting. So we want to move this, we want this for 12 months. So copy this. So we can a couple of ways we can do this. We can go Control C, one, two, three, four, and put it over there. Okay, so we can see we've month one and June. But we want these to increment, not by the, by themselves without having to type it in individually in every one. So if we create a formula here, equals cell C six plus one. Now we can see that we've month two, and the reason why C six was because C six is where this number one is located. Likewise, C7 is where the date is located. So if we go, we, now this we want to create, use a, we'll use the end of month formula to do this. So we could, and again, the reason, I'll show you the reason why. We could go, we could have the 30th of June here, 2012. Let's go, we could have 31st of January, 2012. Okay, and if we went to equals that, plus 30 all of a sudden we've got March we've missed February because there's 28 days in February another way we could do it is plus 365 divided by 12 again that can cause a problem we can get around that problem by putting in the 15th of January 2012 that'll sort out that problem However, again, the most, the best way to do is to use a proper formula. 31 January, and we're in the year of 2013. And the formula we can use for this is end of month. So equals EOM. So return is the serial number for the last day of the month. Hit the tab key now. It'll bring in the rest of the formula. Start date is equal to C7, or click with your mouse. And the number of months is 1. So it's a 1 month since the start date. So we can see we have February 2013. Now we could change that to 12. And you can see that will bring us a year in advance, January 2013, January 2014. And you can see yourself the use the uses that you could have for that. So January, so February 2013. So if that so here for month two we have cell C6 plus one. For the February 2013, we have the end of month formula for C7 plus one month. Again, you can actually use, just to show another example, you could do a minus one. And it'll bring you back a month to December. So 
and some lift driver. Okay, I want to I want this weight here in this column. So our way of doing it, a shortcut, to, uh, another shortcut for doing this is, we'll see what weight it is at H O W. So we can see it's 0.92. We can go over and type in 0.92 to keep it consistent. We can also use F4. F4 is a shortcut key which copies the last, the last thing you did in Excel or Microsoft Word for that matter. F4. So let's go back L H O. W. So put in the width point 0.92, press F4, and you can see it's automatically put in F2, and we can do that as many times as we want. Okay, so let's undo some of them, we don't need all of them. Oops, redo that one. Okay, so we want to copy this across. So highlight what we want to copy. The little box down at the bottom here, if we drag the mouse over it and we get the crosshairs, we can drag that across one, two, three. And we can see we have it. Unfortunately, we haven't got our column width properly. Now again, we can do that in the end if we want. Another thing we can do is we can highlight all the columns. So if we highlight four columns across, go Control and Shift, or sorry, Control and Spacebar again, we'll do that. Press the Control button and press the Spacebar. It'll highlight the columns. So again, so we drag, one, two, three, four. So we'll keep dragging over, see how we get on over we can delete the additional rows at the end okay so month seven we may need more rows get our crosshairs somewhere that's not doing it okay click here crosshairs oops gone too far this time okay so 116 we don't need it as far as 116 just need as far as 112. Okay, and you can see by highlighting the columns, it, it also fit the column width. So get rid of, get use the shortcuts to get rid of your extra columns. Might leave that on for formatting. So we have month one to month 12. What are we forgetting? We're forgetting about a total month. So we want to insert a couple of more columns. And we shall, I'll just copy and paste. Control C to copy. Again, I'm going to Alt H O W 92 F4 to copy last selection, and this will be total. So, total, and I suppose we can just use total here for the moment. Okay, so now we have our totals. Okay, and just to minimize out of that there a little bit, just so we can see a bit more. You can see we have all our different columns, different or different headings, pre-formatted, copying the formats, sped up the work quite a bit. So back to 100. Okay, so now we're going to get into some formulas. We will start our headings with, our first heading is going to be our income expenditure account. So we're looking at our sales. Okay, so depending on the type of data set, and we will be showing you some tricks in the next couple of videos of how to really customize and get the most from this. But we will just assume we have a total sales column first of all, and we'll use say, a clothing store or a drapery store for example, or a, a large retail shop. So we'll say drapery, drapery, uh, food, and hardware. I'm just thinking of headings at the, along at the, off the top of my head. Okay, so our sales remaining heading, so control B for bold. Okay, we want to show that these are subheadings, so we'll indent them in a little bit. So again, we can hover over here, over this, so we can see increase indent, so let's do the shortcuts on it. Alt H and six. So now we've increased the indent on that. So you can see you've got your sales heading and your subheadings. Okay, so I'm just going to type in some manual data here for the moment to look at it, or look at it. So we'll go actual 100, budget 100, prior 100. And we'll do the, use the same figures. Control C, Control V, we'll just go, we'll go as far as month three. And what do we want to do? We want to bring in the totals here. But as well as bringing in the totals, we want to be able 
select a range of months, maybe say from January to March or quarter one to quarter two or five months or four months. So we want to add an additional bit of customization to our spreadsheet. So before we put in any formulas, we're going to bring in what I would call a, a helper cell. So we will insert a new row up here. So again, to undo that to show how we did it. Alt H I for insert R for rows. So Alt H I R again on the keyboard, nice and quickly, and it's done in seconds. Okay, so we're going to look at some conditional formatting. Sorry, some data validation. We're going to look at some data validation because I want a list as an option to pick from. And by utilizing a list option, it means that every time we get consistency. So we're going to do a simple data validation. Sometimes I create a list. However, this time I just my list is going to consist of two items. So I'm going to type it in manually. So data validation. So we want data. Alt A for data and V for validation and V again. So what do we want to allow? I want to allow any list, okay, and the source is include or ex exclude. Very simple. And enter. So now you'll see I have my drop down options include and exclude. Okay, a problem there is it's centered across all the cells, so let's remove that formatting. Alt H M and U. Okay, so include or exclude. And actual fact, I would prefer that to have that formatted more akin to the bottom one. Alt H J and go forty percent. Okay, and Alt H. Okay, so we'll copy that. Control C, Control V, Control V. So exclude, exclude, exclude. Yeah, we'll leave exclude on it for the moment. So what I will do is I'm going to finish copying this across these across and come back for the next video where we will start to build our formula so thanks for watching give us the give the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video again use comments to give feedback and to ask for ask for me to look at other things and i would be very grateful if you subscribe to the channel